Today on Park Life, the kids of King's School visit the park. I went all red because you can't breathe. You were like, oh my god. <laughs> we meet children's entertainer, Pirate Bill. Everybody say like a chuckle brother there. I think the chuckle brothers would be insulted by it. And hotel singer Charlie gets all slushy. Yeah, absolutely. We'll go around the gardens and do all that romantic goon stuff. <laughs> Right, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Atkinson. <laughs> There's an added buzz in the playground of King's School this morning. Year six are assembling for a trip to Alton Towers, and the kids are already getting excited. And see, like, looking over the edge, you can see these holes smoking out. Yeah, and then you can see and well, and then you can see well, you go, pull and you come out. Yeah, and then you come out. 70 kids are travelling to the park as a reward for a year of gruelling schoolwork. Yeah, because we've been doing too many tests this year. We've been there are two coach loads travelling, and on arrival, they'll all split up into small supervised groups. I'm Catherine, and I'm in Mrs Brown's group. <laughs> I'm Alison, and I'm in Mrs Brown's group. I'm Sarah, and I'm in Mrs Brown's group. The kids can't wait to get going, but soon enough, they're on the coach. Apparently, the driver is not a music lover. Charlie works as a singer in the park's on-site hotel. Her boyfriend also works as a singer. Sadly for her, though, he's based over 200 miles away at Butlins in Bognor Regis. But today, she's getting a visit. Today, I'm driving to the station Stoke, all the way over to Stoke, to meet my boyfriend at the station, who's been travelling since about 6, 6.30 this morning on a train, just to come and see me for one day. I'm really excited. <laughs> We've been sort of texting each other lots every night, counting the days down. <laughs> Charlie is late and Tony is already waiting, but there are some things worth waiting for. It's an emotional reunion. Tony has had a six hour train journey to get here, but it's worth it. Of course I'm pleased to see her. It was a tiring journey, but I'm glad I made it. Does everyone know that the does everyone know that the perimeter gate locks have changed? Not lo not the locks, but the actual numbers. Yeah. If you want to. Know, Wayne Croak is deputy know. manager of the park's host team. The guys and girls who look after guests in venues like Adventureland, Front of House, and the 3D Cinema. Today, Wayne is in charge because his boss Richard is on holiday. My agenda for today, amongst many other things, uh, consists of organize a coffee machine for Adventureland. It's a very busy day today, extremely busy in fact. Generating ideas for entertainment. So I guess just hang on. We've got to update one of our data sheets. Uh, the data sheet is that that we use to sign off the venue. Hiya, hiya. The new ice show is at the minute got a temporary signage arrangement. Ha! 3D needs a new file. Interesting. That was actual bodily harm. <laughs> Characters like Baby Bear, yeah. um, you know, they're always being asked to, to go to people's rooms and, you know, um, <laughs> visit children and all that sort of thing. Richard and Michael are employed as character performers in the hotel show. Today, they're going through their contracts. I mean, up until this job came up, I was doing my hairdressing because that's what my trade is as well. Um, and um, I was sort of plodding along with that, did panto, came back and went back to the salon. And as I say, and this came along and I thought, mm, do I want to move away again? Do I want to do this? And I just thought, oh, we'll go with it. Since the first audition, I was called back, not for the part that um, I auditioned for, which was very flattering, but for, <laughs> but for uh, Lionel Diamond. He's um, a flamboyant little show off and uh, I'm hoping that it'll be a lot of fun to play. I, uh, I went for the fitting and uh, I'm in white PVC tight trousers. We have a gold lame jacket, which I'm absolutely stunned with, <laughs> and a pink jacket to sort of match, but not quite the, uh, the platform shoes. I said, well, do you want me to wear a wig? And I said, oh, no, your hair's fine. I thought, oh, swines, <laughs> swines. Meanwhile, the 90-minute journey from King's School is well underway. 
there's plenty of singing and lots of anticipation for the day ahead. Well, first we're going on the black hole, then we're going on the Ferris wheel. Yeah, we've only got Air, Nemesis and Oblivion. Yes, yes. Oh, I, the best one, uh, Barney Land! Last time I went, I was one centimetre too small for all of those. I haven't been on them before. Yeah, There's also some one-upmanship going on about who's got the most famous relative. My cousin's Maria. Second cousin. Second cousin, yeah, second cousin. Yeah, I like Britney Spears, my cousin. I'm Britney Spears. My cousin's Robbie Williams. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin is McLuhan, yeah. <laughs> McLuhan, that's the one. Bethan's my uncle. <laughs> They're all raring to go, but first, a word of warning. If anyone comes back soaking wet, right, you'll be phoning your parents up to come and pick you up because you won't be allowed on the seats. And there's no chips, no burgers and no ice cream definitely allowed back on the coach. And if there's any rubbish on the coach, when we get back to school, I'll brush it out on the car park and then you can let to pick all next week. OK, so okay. there are the rules. Come on, Mr Driver, where's your sense of fun? Right, at the minute we're off to check the venue for health and safety. Uh, it's not a big in detail thing because we do get checked uh, on a regular basis anyway, but it's more on a presentation side of things that do we have all our lamps working, do we do we have all the staff in the right places, is the venue ready to open really, is it, is it clean enough, you know? Wayne's first problem are some lights going out at the bouncy castles. We've got like a star cloth that runs across the whole of the ceiling. Is it a socket issue or is it an actual lamp issue. Wayne's socket issues and lamp issues will soon be resolved, but before long, he has a tree issue to deal with. It appears there has been some tree cutting at the rear of one of the theatres, and some of the shows have been interrupted by the sound of branches hitting the theatre roof. Um, I don't know whether it's been mentioned to you, but you're cutting at the back of the Barney's Theatre here, and we've got shows going on at 11, 30, 2 and 4. Is there any chance we can not cut? Well, not in, in any chance. We're going to have to stop cutting during that period for the sake of the show because we can hear it. Not 11, no. The house opens half an hour before the show. Right. So we need the cutting to stop at, let's say the show is at half 11, 11 o'clock till 12 o'clock. Alpha 1, 1, 2, Alpha 1, 7, over. It should have cut the tree down before the first show, but there might be a mess at the back of the theatre, but it shouldn't be in an evacuation path, over. Right, all sorted, eh? All sorted. Around 232,000 schoolchildren visit Alton Towers every year. That's about 4,750 coach loads. And today's visitors from King's School are already hitting fever pitch. <laughs> Sorry about that. You shouldn't have been filming. <laughs> I didn't quite realise you were there. What the girls don't want is a bunch of boys cramping their style. The boys are in steam grip. But they're just following us. They're just going to follow us to be in and why are they going to follow you? Because they they're obsessed with these two! <laughs> they're obsessed with those two! Yeah. We're not obsessed with them, they're obsessed with us! Yeah. No, you're not! She just can't stop hugging me! <laughs> Catherine, Alison, Sarah and Holly just can't decide which way to go. How do we get there? You can't go right here? Well, if in doubt, just run. Over at the park's on-site hotel, a salty old sea dog is preparing for action. Gold tooth, bandana, ruff, boy there for me heart is. Coat, did your old mate fire a bell? <laughs> Sword and belt. Children, come here and have a look what we got. And now, I'm ready to go. In that hand, yes. there is a black disc. There is. And in that hand, there's a white disc. Right. OK. With you so far. Now, I'm just going to close them up. Yeah. Can you remember which one the black one was in? 
Yeah, that one. Yeah, well, it's changed. <gasps> now, that's the white and that's the black. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, I'm Pirate Bill, the children's entertainer. And it's my job to entertain all the children, keep them all happy when they've had a busy day on the park, and uh, take the pressure off the mums and dads. I tell you, that's not much of a trick at all, really, not is it, really, lads? No. This would be even better. If you could turn that one... Yeah. ...into a green oh. one, that'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that would it? be great. And then if you could get this one, Parsley... Yeah. ...and turn that one... What would happen then? ...into a red one, that'd be brilliant. And do you know what... I have been a children's entertainer for 34 years, and I've been a pirate for the last four. Everybody say I look like a Chuckle Brother there. I don't know if that's good or bad. I think the Chuckle Brothers would be insulted by it. Parsley, yeah. your hat is battered. Yes, it is. Because I dropped it in the chip shop. Oh, and that's why it got battered. So I have made him a new hat. Ooh. A new hat. It was 1968 and I was working at Butlins as a red coat. And the guy that we had who was a children's entertainer was a bit like Mr Partridge off the Heidi High. He absolutely hated kids and he was... Um, punching them and hitting them. So he got the sack halfway through the season. So they said to me, well, you know, would you take over? And I said, oh, no, 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 no. Well, just be for a weekend, you know. And that was August um, 1968. And we were 34 years on, I'm still doing it. It was a long weekend, that one, wasn't it? <laughs> I had a blue hat once. Hey, what happened hey. to your blue hat? It blew off. <laughs> Pirate Bill blew off. No, I And I really, really, and I'm not just saying this for the camera, enjoy every single day of my job. I'm so lucky to have a job that I enjoy doing. Can you remember me? Yeah. What's my name then? Um. Forgotten. <laughs> they always let you down, don't they? They never said work with children and animals. With over 30,000 financial products available, how do you choose the right ones? An independent financial advisor can give you unbiased advice on mortgages, pensions, <gasps> ISAs, and investments. For a free consultation, without obligation, call 0800 085 3250 and make your money work harder for you. That's 0800 085 3250. Get in touch now for your free consultation. You know the feeling. Bills you can't clear. Expensive credit card debts you can't pay. You could wait for a miracle to happen. But as a homeowner, there's a simple way to solve your problems. Hello, the mortgage lender. How can I help you? The mortgage lender specialises in remortgages for those of us who may have been turned down elsewhere. You could be accepted even if you have mortgage arrears, county court judgments, if you're self-employed or can't prove your income. With the mortgage lender, it's quick and easy to unlock the cash tied up in your home, clear your debts and enjoy peace of mind once more. So call 0500 410 410 now for an immediate lending decision. The Mortgage Lender. Call today for a brighter tomorrow. Why do our members prefer AOL? The channels are great. Rather than search through stuff on the web, AOL group it all together and the internet's just a click away. There's always something new because they're always updating it. AOL searching keywords are brilliant. Everything's so quick and easy to find. You get so much more with AOL. And the helpline's completely free. Who can match that? Until we joined AOL, we had no idea what we were missing. It's great value too. For your completely free trial, call 0800 376 444. Have you been injured, had an accident at work, on the road, or in a public place? Unsure if you have a claim for compensation, concerned about hidden charges? Now, there is no need to worry. The Personal Injury Helpline will handle your claim with no charges and nothing taken from the money you're awarded. So, for a risk-free quality service, call us free now on 0800 085 1715. If you don't make the call, you'll never know. Hello. When you want a personal loan, you can just go to your bank. But why not see if it's easier, faster and cheaper to call Lombard Direct on 0800 2 15,000. Your rate is based on your circumstances and loan amount. Our typical rate is just 8.4% APR. For an unsecured personal loan of up to £25,000, call Lombard Direct on 0800 2 15,000 or apply online. As a result of grinding poverty, today a child will die every four seconds from diseases which could be prevented or easily cured. In Brazil, nearly four million children won't have the chance to go to school. In the poorest areas of Senegal, 
Half the children will have nothing to drink but dirty water. And five million children will have to work long hours in Bangladesh to earn enough to eat. As a World Vision child sponsor, you can help turn this around, helping families in poor communities to provide their children with basic health care, clean water, and enough food to eat, and giving them the chance to learn to read and write. For just 60p a day, you can become a child sponsor and change their world. Call World Vision now on 0800 50 10 10 for an information pack. One of the perks of working in a theme park is that you're allocated a number of free tickets. So hotel singer Charlie is using hers to treat long-distance boyfriend Tony to a lovey-dovey day on the park. Yeah, absolutely. We'll go around the gardens and do all that romantic gooey stuff. <laughs> no, it'd just be nice to spend some time with them, you know, start talking again when it's not on text. Face-to-face <laughs> -face talking. The two lovebirds have got a lot of catching up to do, so they're avoiding the white knuckle rides and opting for a stroll in the famous gardens. Well, now that she's so far away, they obviously we don't see as much of each other as well as I'd like anyway. But, so it just it does make it that little bit harder when you are apart, but then it also makes it that much better when you're together. I'd say. It's, miss her being there. It's just bizarre. Charlie met Tony when she was a redcoat at the same camp in Bogner. I can never go back now. <laughs> You'd be surprised. A lot of people would not leave and go back. I can go back as a red cow anyway. Maybe now after I've got some experience, I might do some of the shows or something like that, maybe. Even though I've only been here today for a few hours, it's been really, really good. To, it has been nice. At the other side of the park, Richard and Michael are preparing to present an untried section of their act to a theatre full of their fellow staff. At the moment, we're sort of... Um, we're panicking. We're not panicking. We're OK. All we're doing is the game show. We're giving away some vouchers, just to give them an incentive to keep on listening. Yeah. So, um... Stop them losing the will to live. We are punctuation today. I'm a comma, he's a full stop. Uh, my, my makeup directions are that I have to be completely orange at all times, so I'm going to look a bit like Judith Chalmers, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Miss Tanya Hyde! <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Lovely. I've now got to introduce you to my new entertainment host. You've all seen the Lion King, or prepare to meet the Lame Queen. Would you please welcome Mr. Lionel Diamond? <laughs> oh, we'll start with a bang. Come on, let's get up there. Right, folks. Now then, have you all got your tickets handy? Because, ladies and gentlemen, come on, Lord, come on. It's time for our game show, Extravaganza! <laughs> Audience reaction was great. Couldn't believe it. I mean, uh, at the first show, uh, Tanya got a round of applause just for what she was wearing. So it was really good to gauge the level of, uh, of the humour. Oh, we have a magic moment! Are you keeping well? Are we busy then? Meanwhile, over at the Adventure Playground, Deputy Manager Wayne is reminiscing about his early days as a host. We had an event on park actually, and it was all these customers and they had to dress up as a clown. I was put in like the stocks and I was locked in there for about an hour and people <laughs> threw jellies at me, right? And that Somebody who would probably enjoy throwing stuff at Wayne in the stocks is Mel. The two of them have an interesting relationship. Is that right to an extent, I suppose? In small doses. I don't know, I feel like it picks on me sometimes, but um, other people don't think it picks on them, so I don't know. Who was doing coaches? Mel. I should have been doing coaches. I was doing the job lot. Before here, Mel went to a course at college called Confrontational Skills. <laughs> it's all about the art of arguing, the art of lack of discipline and everything else. But on the whole, she's very good. <laughs> Sorry, Mel. Melissa Stanyard. 
very good member of staff. She's uh, very off the wall, uh, which is a reason why we employed her. Uh, she would agree with me when I say she's quite dizzy, but uh, again, being all polite about it, she's a lovely member of staff. You might get the wrong idea, but I hate it, which I don't. I just don't have to see eye to eye with them all the time, so then we don't communicate very well sometimes, and we don't get on too well. Melissa's got many qualities, uh, qualities that I believe in some employment probably would uh, go unseen, you know. Uh, one's uh, some kinds of qualities like interaction. I think Wayne talks like a dictionary, like a thesaurus, I reckon he just follows them at night. Because it's just, it just, the way he speaks, it's so like, weird, it's, it's weird, like, <laughs> they're like fluent, they're like long words. It should come short and make them simpler. Not just for me, obviously, I'm <laughs> there, everyone. The girls have tried virtually every ride in the park, and even a spot of rain can't dampen their spirits. Now, it's time for Oblivion, a ride that's been obsessing them. <laughs> I had a horrible dream last night, where I actually fell off Oblivion and died. And my, fr gonna have and my friend <laughs> turned into a pig as well. Yeah. Oblivion will make our day. We, can't, we don't mind what else we go on after, as long as we go on Oblivion. They've queued, and they're finally in a position to ride. But just as they're set to go, there's a problem. The ride stops, and there's a flurry of activity. It's a moment of tension. Is there a problem with the ride? No, it's a problem with a rider. Apparently, somebody wanted to attempt the vertical drop with a handbag on their knee. That's clever. There's only time left for a couple more rides. We've got about more, five more minutes. So this was the best one we could get. Don't want to go home. Too good. It's been an exciting day for all the school kids, but now the only thing they've got to look forward to is the coach ride home. Back at the hotel, and a crowd is gathering for Pirate Bill's evening performance. It's been a long, hot day for the kids out on the park, and Pirate Bill is worried that he might have to face a small and jaded audience. I don't think there's any professional entertainer wouldn't say they get a little bit nervous. And uh, the day that I'm not nervous, I think that's the day I'll pack in. I'm going to pack this in a lot, aren't I, tonight? <laughs> Hi, kids, how are you doing? Hi. Pirate Bill's my name. I'm just on my way to my show. So are you going to come and watch my magic show? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So we'll see you later. My name is Pirate Bill. You don't have to do that every time I say bottom. <laughs> started I really thought oh yeah I'm gonna be the next Jimmy Tarbuck and because I was a red coat I'm gonna be the next Ken Dodd and had all these grand ideas and uh, it never happened Children, I am not <laughs> and I've got no no qualms with that at all because I've had, had a lovely living doing what I'm doing you know and still still working and hopefully um, for a lot longer <laughs> Well, I think the kids were very good tonight because it's very, very hot there tonight. In that room, it must have been about 100 degrees, which is very, very warm for bears and pirates, and also very, very hot for children who've been walking around a theme park all day. So I think, taking all the consideration, they were a lovely, lovely, lovely audience, and the show didn't go down too bad either. <laughs> While Pirate Bill winds up his performance, Charlie is starting her own and is back entertaining the hotel guests. She said goodbye to her boyfriend Tony and it could be some time before they see each other again.
going to be a long time before I see Tony again, you know, because of our schedules and stuff, so I didn't want to let him go. <laughs> but it was a really nice day, you know, so we enjoyed it. I'm just going to miss him a lot. I think. We're going to hopefully make time to see each other again within the next sort of couple of weeks. Maybe we'll meet halfway. Maybe. We'll try. Next time on Park Life. Christian and Rasmus visit from Denmark. And there's some extreme action when a half-pipe arrives at the park. That's all on the way tomorrow at the same time. Coming up, it's more than just the models who are dressed to kill when Magnum investigates murder at a fashion show. Magnum PR.